Hi, and welcome back to meiosis. We're officially going into meiosis two. We finished meiosis one. We left off at telophase one inside of kinesis where we had our homologous chromosomes cross over, line up along the metaphase plate, separate, and in that process, they exchange a lot of genetic material. And so now we're in, we're in the phase where we have two haploid cells. We started with one diploid cell, and now we're in the phase of two haploid cells, but these cells, they're not ready to, they're, they're not technically germ or uh, gamete cells yet. They're not functional gamete cells yet. We need to get them down to one chromatid. They can't have two chromatids like that to be functional. So in order to, to do the one chromatid chromosome cell, we need one more split. And that's where meiosis two comes in. So this would be, um, big letter C, if I'm not mistaken, in our notes. This would be meiosis 2. And we're going to do just like we did last time with the drawings, and then we'll describe it in, in detail. And so this will be number 1 under meiosis 2. This will be prophase 2. So it's going to be pretty much the same story, and this is more mitosis-like than meiosis 1 was. Because what's going to happen now, we're going to be tracking these two cells forward from here on out. So these two cells are now going to become four cells, and that is the whole point, that these um, two haploid cells with non-identical sister chromatids are going to become four haploid cells with um, single chromatids, and nobody looks the same. All four cells are different. They're individual, they're different, and it makes sense when you're talking about how every egg looks different, every sperm looks different. That's actually very true. And so, Let's follow this through. So I'm just going to kind of draw a line here. These two cells I'm going to copy over here for prophase one because we're going to pick up our story. So for prophase one, we've got our two cells. And between telophase one and prophase one, we do something very similar. We copy the centrosomes in each cell. So they only had two. Now we're going to make you know, our, for, our two pairs in each one. And what's happening is, for a moment in time, the, the DNA got loose, it's gonna recondense, the nuclear envelope's gonna break down, so all of that prophase, prometaphase stuff is happening all over again. So we got our chromosomes. I'm just gonna try to be good with how fast I use my ink here. So I'm just gonna be lots of drawing. <laughs> So these chromosomes are just hanging out and they're ready to enter meiosis 2. They're in prophase 1. Nuclear envelope came, went away, this, and, and the centrosomes were duplicated. So now after prophase 1, you can guess what's going to happen. We have, um, sorry, prophase 1, prophase 2, forgive me, we're in prophase 2. Now when we get into metaphase 2, you, you, you kind of know the routine of what's going to be happening again. So we could kind of bust through this whole entire process. And we really don't need to write too much up because a lot of the same stuff is happening. So if we were to write a little something under prophase one, pretty much all you need to remember is that the centrosomes got duplicated. Centrosomes duplicated. The DNA gets condensed again, and we're just preparing ourselves to do another split as well. So now, or metaphase 2, same story again. So I'm going to take these two cells and put them here. Again, we're going to have a metaphase plate. We got our centrosomes. Oh, and our microtubules are beginning to grow in prophase as well. We're gonna keep gonna make another mitotic spindle to a certain degree here as well. So these chromosomes are gonna go here, these ones are gonna go here, and they're gonna line up along the metaphase plate along their centromere. Whereas in meiosis one, in metaphase one, they were lined up along the chiasmata. Here they get to line up along the uh, along their centrosome, 
just like we saw in mitosis. So let's draw these little guys. trick is trying to keep your drawing straight and <laughs> make sure you bring over the right chromosomes where they're supposed to be. Okay, and now we have our kinetochore micro microtubules just like we did in mitosis, on each side of the kinetochore of these non-identical sister chromatids. So very mitosis-like. You, you, you kind of see what's going to happen here. So my, microtubules, microtubules connect to kinetochore, just like before, and they line up along the metaphase plate. I'm going to call that MP, metaphase plate, at the centromere. Okay? I'm going to go grab a new pen. I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. I need some new black ink for you. All right, so there's metaphase 2. Now, you, you know the routine. After metaphase 2 is going to come anaphase 2. And just like in anaphase before, everything is going to migrate to the poles because those kinetochore microtubules are going to allow them to get pulled in. So, brand new pen. Here we go, number three. Anaphase 2. My cells are getting a little running out of room. All right. So this side is going to get pulled over here. This side is going to get pulled over here. So if I were to draw this, it would be like that. And that remember how they kind of bend when they get pulled? So, and then kind of turn that one into a heart. <laughs> and you got your kinetochore microtubules pulling them in, and the non kinetochore microtubules stretching everything out. And then on this side, this side of the micro, uh, the sister chromatids are going to be pulled on this side. The other ones are going to be pulled toward, towards that pole. Your, your kinetochore microtubules, your non-kinetochore microtubules stretching everything out. So here, if we were to describe it, you would say the non-identical sister chromatids separate and migrate to the poles. This is our final step of meiosis too. This is where it gets really exciting. You can see where we're going to have four new cells develop from this. We're going to split it here and we're going to split it here. One new cell is going to have these two chromosomes, another one's going to have these, and these, and these. And you could see, even from this picture alone, how all four 
new cells that get made are not identical, which means every egg, every sperm, they always look a little bit different. Even though they have the same genetic material, it's just shuffled around differently. So that's why it's really hard to get, you know, like an exact identical twin when it's not an identical twin. Sometimes brothers, and like I've seen families where every brother in that family looks exactly the same, but there's always something different, always. And they have a lot of the same qualities. Some of the dominant traits always go through, but um, everybody's different, except if you are an identical twin, that's because one egg and one sperm fertilized and you had an extra split during development. And that's the only, those are the only ones that are I, I, exactly the same. Everybody else, uh, you have a little bit of difference between the two of you. So let's get to this last phase of meiosis too. So I hope you don't mind. I started writing a little bit of detail under each one, but you know the story now, which is wonderful. You could kind of lead, it, lead, lead the story if you wanted to. So the last phase, we need a little extra room here because now we've got to make four cells. So I'm going to put this cell over here and this cell I'm going to split down here. So this will be number four, telophase two, oops, and cytokinesis. Remember, cytokinesis is just assumed. If it's happening with telophase, if you're in and telophase anything, you're gonna have cytokinesis. So I'm gonna put this cell, I'm gonna split this cell over here, I'm gonna split this cell down here, so I'll have a total of four cells when we're all done. So give me a little bit of time to make all these cells really quickly. And during, remember, you're also kind of splitting up the centrosomes also. And nuclear envelope is gonna reform, so we're gonna create our new nuclear envelope. I'm just gonna make a solid one. Get a new nuclear envelope. All right, so let's draw some chromosomes here. So this one, I'm gonna have, this one's just gonna be that, and this one, Gonna be this. And this one. Okay, and then this one. It's gonna be that. Okay, all right. You may think that these two are identical, but they're not, and here's why. So now, remember that these chromosomes are numbered one through two. I'm sorry, well, in our case, it's one and two, but in our, our world, it's one through 23. But what we now have, remember that the chromosomes we inherit, in this case, I made the mom chromosomes black and the dad chromosomes green, so remember, this one is chromosome one from mom, this is chromosome two from dad. This is chromosome one from mom, but now she she got a little bit of dad chromosome mixed up in, in this one too as well. This is chromosome one, this is chromosome two. I kept them in order in real life. They're floating around the nucleus, they're not in perfect order like this, but you're not gonna, you know, get stuff that's different. So. None of these cells are identical, which is awesome. And so now, if these were four sperm cells, you, you wouldn't be you know, fertilizing with the same sperm each time. There would be different, different offspring you would get from every combination. So it's pretty amazing. So at the end of telophase two inside of kinesis, here's the big, big, big takeaway. You produce, and so this could be little a under the telophase two, you produce four non-identical half 
haploid cells. And I'm going to say haploid gamete cells. Um, with one chromatid. So each chromosome is made of one chromatid at this point. Okay. That is the end of meiosis two. So when we get back, what, what I want to what I want to do is actually do a quick comparison between mitosis and meiosis. And then we will do a quick review into the gametogenesis. What makes girls different than boys, besides the obvious stuff? And, but when it comes to meiosis, girls and boys do this a little bit differently. And the process is the same. The timing is different. And so we're going to go into that just a tiny bit. And that would be the end of this section. So I hope you've understood this whole process and you see where things are different and where they relate. There's a, always a compare con contrast issue here. So we're going to draw it all out and we're going to compare it. And I hope it all works out for you. So we'll be back. Come on back for a review and we'll get into what makes girls and boys a little different. <laughs> Thanks.